In the last video, we went over acidic functional groups, which included carboxylic acids, phenols, sulfonamides, and imides. So before watching this video, make sure you are familiar with the acidic functional groups. In this video, we're going to go over the basic functional groups, which there are only three main ones that I would like to go over. And in the next video, we'll talk about neutral functional groups. So one basic functional group, which we've seen in previous videos, is the aromatic amine. And we said that in order for a functional group to be an aromatic amine, we would need the aromatic or the benzene ring shown here to be directly attached to a nitrogen with that readily available lone pair. And then, for example, you could have an NH2. Okay, so this is one example of an aromatic amine. Of course, this could be part of a much larger structure, so you want to keep that in mind. For example, I can have my aromatic amine. And next to that aromatic amine, I could have another group like carboxylic acid, and then maybe another carbon-carbon group that ends with like an alcohol. And then maybe attached to that, I could have another carbon chain that ends with a nice ester. And so, of course, this isn't a real structure. I just made it up. But the carboxylic acid, which are, we already talked about, is acidic. So this is acidic. And the aromatic amine is right here where we have this benzene ring directly attached to a nitrogen. So that is my aromatic amine. And then we also have an ester, which you should recognize um, based on knowing your functional groups. This is an ester, and we'll talk about how that's neutral and why in the next video. And this is an alcohol, which is also neutral, and we'll talk about why. So in blue, we have the base. Uh, the aromatic amine, in pink we have the carboxylic acid which is acidic, and in green we have the two uh, examples of neutral functional groups, an ester and an alcohol. Now another basic functional group is an aliphatic amine. So an aliphatic amine is when you have some sort of carbon-carbon chain, you don't have a benzene ring, you don't have that aromaticity, and then you have a nitrogen attached. So I could technically have a benzene ring out here. Again, I'm making up all these structures right now. I could have a benzene group out here, but it's not an aromatic amine because it's not directly attached. It's not directly attached to this amine. Okay, so this top structure uh, is an aromatic amine, and this is an aliphatic amine. Then we have one more basic functional group called a pyridine. A pyridine is a six-membered ring with one of the members being a nitrogen. It has aromaticity. It has a lone pair here. So I'm going to kind of zoom in on that. If I draw it this way, you could see exactly what's happening. So we have a lone pair. Double bond right here, double bond right here, double bond right here. So this nitrogen is not sandwiched. Um, sorry, excuse me. This nitrogen uh, is directly next to a double bond. Okay, so keep that in mind. We have a nitrogen and it's directly attached to a double bond. And this is a six-membered ring. Okay, so it has one, two, three, four, five carbons, and then the nitrogen is the sixth member of that ring. And the nitrogen is directly next to a double bond. So this nitrogen is actually a basic 
nitrogen and it is called a pyridine nitrogen. In the next video we're going to compare pyridines to another functional group called a pyrrole and we'll draw that structure and see how pyrroles are actually very different. Although they look similar, pyrroles are going to be neutral. But this functional group drawn right here is a pyridine and it is considered to be basic. So we talked about three basic functional groups, the aromatic amine, the aliphatic amine, and lastly we talked about pyridine. In the next video we'll visit some neutral functional groups such as an ester, an alcohol, and pyrroles. So keep this pyridine structure in mind because we're going to compare it to the pyrrole structure in the next video.